Today we are going to be going over some of the basics of Java programming. In today's video, we're going to be going over basic output, basic input, and the random number generator. So let's get started. So every single program basically follows three different steps. There's an input, a process, and an output. So the first thing we're going to look at is the output. And the reason why we're looking at the output is because there's no sense in doing the input or the process unless you can actually check that what you're doing is actually correct. And for that, we need output. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with just some output. Now, the simplest way to do output in Java is that you have to actually use um, the system command. All right. So there is a command called system. And within that, uh, it's actually an object called system. And within that system, there are some uh, out commands, so system.out, and then there's a command called print. Now, whatever you put into, whatever string you put into the print command will be printed onto the screen. So we're gonna just start off with a hello world program. All right, so let's take a look at it and see how it looks. Okay, so there we go, hello world. Let's put the console just beside it, hello world. Now, if we were to repeat this, all right, and let's just say you are watching Tao of Chow. All right, there we go. And we'll see what happens here. Now, because the print is just a print, right, then Basically what's gonna happen here is that the two lines are gonna appear adjacent to each other. Now there are some ways to work around it. You can put in an inline character. An inline character can be embedded in the string like that, okay, with a backslash n, right? And now you'll end up with two separate lines. So the inline character is like almost like pressing enter on the keyboard. Rather than do that though, what we can do is instead we'll just use a command called print line. And print line basically prints your string, but it also prints a line, an end line character at the end of the string. Right, so we get the same thing there, and we don't have to have those backslash ends within our within our code. All right, so now that we've covered basic output, let's go to basic input. And, and to do that, we're going to make an echo program. So what we're going to do is we are going to change our inputs here, or our outputs here, and we're going to say please enter a number. All right, so please enter a number. And then here, uh, let's go int number. Now Java doesn't like it if you don't format or if you don't initialize your variables. So you should initialize your variables. You can see if I take this away here, Right, then it'll give me a warning. I'll say, and I'll say it's not used, but it won't like it. I'll show you, I'll just leave it like that. And I'll show you guys what I, what will happen here. So it's gonna say, please enter a number. And here I'm gonna echo back and I'm gonna say, you entered. Okay, now if we want to add something in addition to the string, we just use a plus sign. Okay, number like that. And right now, Java's not really not gonna like it. So yeah, so there's an error there. And you can see, it says the local variable number may not have been initialized. So that's what I mean. Java doesn't like it if you don't give initial variable uh, numbers to your variables or initial values. So if I just run this now, there you go. Please enter a number, you entered zero. Now, the reason why it says you entered zero is just because we haven't initialized, we haven't actually taken any input yet. So what we have to do here is we are going to take some input. Now, in order to do that, what we have to do is we have to create an object called a scanner. And basically a scanner is something that is going to help us just read input from a certain location. Now scanners can read inputs from different places like files or from the keyboard. And in this case, we wanna read from the, uh, from the keyboard. So we're gonna call our scanner input. You can name it whatever you want, but it should be a descriptive name. Uh, usually I just use input. So scanner input is equal to new scanner. So we're gonna make a new scanner and we are gonna tell that scanner to look at the system object specifically at its input. And so we're gonna say, look at the system. 
And just as here we were looking at output, now we're going to be looking at input. All right, now we're getting a red line here because scanner is unresolved, it means that basically Java doesn't know what the scanner is. So what we have to do is we have to import that from a library. Now you can type the code up here if you want, but instead, as I, you can see here, I have a macro to import is Control Shift O. So if I press Control Shift O, you can see that Java will automatically import the scanner for me. Now if I want to, if I take away the scanner and press Control Shift O, you can see that scanner has now gone away. All right, and I did say that it was Java importing the scanner. It's actually Eclipse, that's a feature of Eclipse. If you use other um, IDEs, like different development environments, then uh, it may not, like they might not have that feature or it might be a different macro. All right, so now I have a scanner called input and I can say input, um, actually I say number is equal to, now we're gonna ask input to do a command. Okay, so we're gonna say input.next. Now if I just said next, that would get back a string. So you can see it here. Input.next returns a string. I don't want it to return a string, so I want it to get an integer. So we're gonna say next int. And there's next double, there is no next char, uh, but there is next double, next int, next long, and so on and so forth. And next, if you just want a string. So we have numbers equal to input.nextint, and that's going to read in the then read in a number from the keyboard. And then what it's going to do is it's just going to echo this back. All right, so let's give it a try. So it says, please enter a number. I'll enter one, two, three. You entered one, two, three. So we got some basic input there. Okay, so now that we've got some input and output, what we can do is we can go and work on the random number generator. Now, Java's random number generator uh, basically is a little bit different than C++. In C++, the random number generator just generates a very large number. Uh, but in Java, what it does is it generates a number from zero to one, but it never generates a zero and it never generates a one. Okay, so we can write that here. Java's RNG, random number generator, always generates a number from zero to one and never generates a zero or, or a one. All right, so basically it's always gonna give us a decimal number. Now, instead of entering a number, what we'll do is we'll say a maximum number. And that'll be the maximum number for our random number generator. And we can actually repeat this. So let's just reorganize our code a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna say, instead of number, we will call this max. And we will make another one called min. So now we're going to be taking in our max and min. So this will be max. Okay. So if I wanted to take in the max and the min, I can just copy these lines and modify them. So what I can do is I can say minimum. So please enter a minimum number. And here, min is equal to input.next. So I'm going to ask for the minimum. Then I'm going to ask for the maximum. Now, one of the things is that if you notice, I did not create a second scanner. I'm basically just reusing the same scanner over and over again to do all my inputs and you should too. You shouldn't actually create a new scanner for every single input because it's wasteful and it's really unnecessary. All right, and then uh, what we're gonna do is we are gonna make a variable for the random number. So we'll just say random is equal to zero right now. Okay, so at the beginning of the program, random number is equal to zero. Okay, so how does this work? Well, what we do is we say random is equal to, now we ask Java's math object. Okay, so there's an object called math and it can do a lot of different things. So you can see like it can do floor values, absolute values, incrementers, rounding, subtraction, and tangent, like all your trig values, stuff like that. There's a ton of things that math can do. The one that we are particularly interested in though is called math.random. All right. Now, the problem with math.random is it's a decimal number. Like I said, it generates a number from 0 to 1, and it's always a decimal, like 0 0.85 or 0 0.447 or something like that. 
Now, we cannot store that into our random variable because our random variable is an integer, and this, by its definition, is a double. So what we have to do is we have to do some casting. So we have to tell the computer, by putting int in parentheses ahead of the random number generator, that this math, this random number generator, is whatever number it creates, we're going to convert it to an int on this line. Now, you're going to see what will happen with that, though. Okay, so we have random, and we're going to get zero. Okay, so it doesn't matter what I enter here. So if I enter one and 10, okay, it's going to be a zero. And the reason why is because when we have this number, let's say it's a 0 0.99. Well, when you convert that to an integer, what happens is it drops its decimals. It's a process called truncation. It doesn't round. So what's going to happen is it's just going to drop off the decimals, and then the random number will just be zero. right? So no matter what this generates, it's always going to be a zero. So what we have to do is we are going to modify this number. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to say we're going to uh, multiply it. Now, what we're going to but what do you multiply it by? Okay, well, if I want to generate a number between let's say one and ten, we can say that that's the same as generating a number from zero to nine. Now, the reason why is because the difference between ten and one is nine, and the difference from zero to nine is also nine. And then what we can do is we can say well. If you're generating a number between any two numbers, it's the same as generating a number between zero and that difference. So what we can do is we can say we can multiply that by max minus min, right? So what I can do is I can say, well, I want to generate a number between, if I want from one to 10, I can just generate a number from zero to nine. But because Java's random number generator won't ever generate a one, you'll never get that nine. You can get a zero, but you can't get a nine. So what we have to do is try and generate a number from zero to 10 instead. And for that, we have to have a plus one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, let's say for instance, I wanted to generate a number between, let's say eight and 15. Well, 15 minus eight is seven, right? So we're gonna say generate a number between 15 minus eight, which is seven, but we can't get a seven ever. So we have to do plus one. So I say, okay, generate a number from zero to eight. Okay, so that actually is gonna give me a number from zero to seven, right? If I try and multiply it by eight, because I can never get a one. All right, but I don't want a number from zero to seven. I want a number from eight to 15. So what I have to do is whatever number I came up with, okay, I have to add the minimum back to it, All right? And that's basically what we do. Okay, so we say, we take our random number, which is a decimal number from zero to one, we multiply it by max minus min plus one, and then we add the minimum back to it. All right, now if you leave this equation just like this, the number is still gonna always be zero. All right, and I'll show you guys here. Oh, uh, you entered one. Oh yeah, because of the plus one here, sorry. It'll always be one because we're always just adding, well, it'll always be min. Now, the reason why is because what we're doing is we're casting this value first. It's the order of operations. So it's going to say max uh, integer math.random, which is going to be a zero. And then whatever is that, so zero times max minus min plus one. So what we have to do is we have to add parentheses here to put it in order. So this way we do the calculation first, right? And then we convert it to an integer last. Okay, so let's give that a shot. So and generate a number from one to 10. Okay, there we go. And our number is seven. All right, I can demonstrate this again. If I went eight to 15, okay, then you got a nine. All right, so that's basically just how you do input, output, and random number generation in Java.